In this video I'm going to discuss some of the advanced controls and uh, specifically focus on design time controls and, uh, and the program blocks. So the first thing I'd like you to notice when I look at this page is that uh, this control here and this control here, this one was a color selector and this is a color palette, these are both examples of design time controls and you can see down at the bottom of uh, my control toolbar here there's my color palette and here are all of the program blocks that we can use and those are what are known as design time controls and the reason of course they're called design time controls is that when I go into run mode you'll notice that those controls do not appear they only exist to provide functionality to the page designer at design time so let me talk a little bit about uh, what we're looking at here. You'll notice that in this case I've already built the demonstration page just to save a little bit of time. Up here at the top I have four labels and four text entry fields and each text entry field has been given a name of TXT Alpha, TXT Red, TXT Green, etc. And you'll see that uh, because I'm using a text entry field I have the ability to indicate what my what my validation is and, and so specifically because I'm going to try to build a color using alpha red green and blue component values I want each of those to be integer values between 0 and 255 and if I enter a number that is not an integer or not within that range you'll see that the uh, the background of that text entry field should uh, should turn kind of a, a soft red color. Those numbers are going to feed into this control here which is a color selector and you'll notice that what I've done is I've actually bound these uh, these properties start off unbound but I've used simple binding to bind A or alpha to the value of TXT alpha and the same thing TXT red, TXT uh, green and TXT blue. So what that should do is provide a programmatic determination of a particular color and of course with this value right now I've got a fully opaque which is the alpha value 255 a fully opaque green and you can see when I look at the outputs here that the built ARGB color is in fact lime green and then what I did was bound the primary light color to that uh, selected ARGB color and uh, and so you can see that as I go into run mode here and I change the color let's just change this one here from a 255 to well actually you'll see when I deleted the zero the background of this text entry field immediately turned red because of course that's not a valid color if I go beyond 255 it also gives me uh, an invalid indication and if I try to hit enter which I'm doing, it, it doesn't accept that. If I do, of course, enter a valid value like 255 and I hit enter, you'll notice that the color of the light, of course, becomes uh, yellow, which is which is uh, red and green. And if I do the same thing down here with blue, I end up getting a white light. And of course, I can change uh, the component colors to, to any value I want. And uh, I should end up with something that, you know, provides some kind of a, a, a reasonable color. Um, now that's a bit of a dark color. You, you may recall from a previous video that the shining light also has a brightness adjustment and so I can choose to turn that on or, or you know make it darker etc. And so if I uh, do change, uh, let me just actually leave that back on as, uh, where's my brightness adjustment again? There we go, I'll just change that back to uh, to none. If I do go back into run mode again and I now change the value to zero for the green component, you can see I kind of get a, a, a dark uh, a dark purple here. Um, let me just continue with the demonstration. You'll notice that very simply the is light flashing property of the uh, light is also bound to this checkbox. So just very simply as I turn flashing on, of course, that light actually starts to flash. Turn that off and go back. So the purpose of the 
color selector is is one of two different things. I can either build a color based on ARGB values and that will then be output as the built ARGB color. I can also use a color selector which I have not done in this demonstration. I can type the name of a color palette and then a, a color index number and and those will be output here as those other properties. So that's one way to build colors. Second thing I'm going to do is uh, notice down here at, at notice this control which is a color palette control and the color palette control provides the designer with the ability to store 16 different custom colors and the reason I might want to do that is because I might want to use the same color for a number of different controls so imagine for example that I wanted to put a gauge uh, on my form and I wanted the gauge to have a background color that well was maybe purple for example and so rather than indicating the the uh, the background property or the gradient color of some form of purple like that what I might choose to do instead is bind that color I use simple binding to the color palette and then to choose a particular color within there so I might choose for example uh, custom color one which is red and of course the advantage of that is that now when I bind all of my colors back to the color palette I can in one place just change what that custom color is and you'll see that I'll change custom color uh, one from red to to well let's do uh, pale turquoise and that automatically changes any controls that are then bound to that color. So storing the colors in the color palette provides a, a very good opportunity to, to save a little bit of effort when you uh, change your mind with colors. So right now with this color palette you'll see that there are 16 different colors in there and what I can do is use those colors or, or select which color I want by specifying a color index and in this case here what I've done is bound the color index property using simple binding to the slider index value. And by the way you'll notice that when I hover over this little icon here it shows not only a tooltip just by my mouse but you may also notice that as that tooltip is displayed the shading around the selected control is also highlighted and that makes it a little bit easier so you can just uh, visually see which control is the is the uh, source of the binding. At any rate you'll notice that the color index is 14 which means that I'm obviously choosing the selected custom color of blue violet and it is that color that I'm using for this light. You can see that it's binding to the selected custom color. So again when I go into run mode here and I change uh, my color by choosing a different index value the light takes on whatever the custom colors were in the uh, in the color palette and I've got that set to uh, to be able to flash as well so the uh, final thing that I want to do is, oh just one other thing as I was thinking about it here a color palette not only has custom colors and you've seen the 16 there but it actually has theme colors as well and you'll notice that the 16 theme colors are all read-only properties these colors derive automatically from the theming for data hub web view you'll notice that we've been all along uh, relying upon a set of bluish gradient type colors for data hub web view and it's those colors that are actually being rendered or made available here so if someone wanted to bind a particular controls color to match a color that is shown inside the application itself then you could just choose uh, one of those colors and if uh, theming is enabled and data hub web view takes on a different style and that option is available uh, with OEM branding which is explained in another uh, video uh, if the uh, if the the OEM decides to rebrand or restyle Data Hub WebView, then obviously these colors will be updated to reflect that style. So uh, one thing I, I one other thing I wanted to illustrate then is some of the other 
program blocks that are available. So down here at the bottom of uh, our toolbar, you'll notice that we have a one and two input uh, calculator. We've got a polynomial calculator, which I'll come back to and explain. You'll also see that I, I've got comparators and Boolean converters and a range mapper. A range mapper would allow me to map one li uh, uh, linear range like uh, 0 to 100, which is the values for PV, I might want to map that to the values of 0 to 255 so that PV might uh, actually represent a, a color component. Uh, we also have a condition selector and uh, one of the interesting things about this condition selector is that it, it's very similar to the condition state logic type behavior that we saw with the symbol. And so you'll notice that we've got states 0 to 4 uh, and we've got an input value. The, the primary difference between using a condition selector and a symbol is that the condition selector allows not only a numeric value uh, range map but also a text match. So if I were actually trying to decide upon a particular state based on some textual input. I cannot do that with a symbol, but I can do that with the condition selector. You'll also notice that each of these states allows you to track various user values. So a uh, couple values, a couple booleans, a couple pieces of text. So, and that of course applies for every one of the, the five states. So depending upon the input value, whether text or numeric, and depending on which state that matches, the current state output is then going to select the appropriate uh, state values from uh, the appropriate state and copy them down. So that's the uh, the condition selector really is an advanced form of, of selection uh, logic. Couple other controls here. I have a timer control and uh, I'll illustrate the timer in conjunction with the polynomial calculator on one of our demo pages. And then finally, the, uh, the, the last program block I want to illustrate is the system information program block, which you'll notice just has a few different pieces of information made available. There is a running uh, clock, so you could always add a label to um, your page and uh, bind that to the current time so that you can always uh, inform the operator of the current time. You'll also see that the system information indicates who the currently logged in user is as well as the name of the page and, uh, and that kind of information. So I'm just going to uh, delete those symbols and just before I uh, switch to a, uh, another uh, another uh, demo page and show you the polynomial calculator and the timer. I'm just going to illustrate the two input calculator. Uh, the two input calculator obviously allows you to specify two different inputs and then it calculates a number of different outputs every time those input values change. So you can take the sum of input 1 and input 2 or the difference or the absolute difference or you can see a number of different uh, functions that are available and just in passing you'll notice that the one input calculator might sound a little bit funny to only have a calculator based on one input but there are many types of functions that only use one uh, input and you'll see that you know I can convert convert the input to a boolean I can convert the input into some form of an RPM indicator I might want to calculate the square or the square root or the natural logarithm or maybe perform a, uh, a trig function calculate the sine or the cosine so that's what the uh, one input calculator does so I'm just going to go back here to the two input calculator again and I'm going to set this up so that add a little piece of text here. This text is going to say something is flashing. And I want this piece of text to be visible whenever either this light or this light is flashing. And so what I really need to do is to perform a Boolean logical OR operation on 
the is checked properties of these checkboxes. So I've selected my two input calculator and I'm going to go down to inputs and input one is going to be bound to the is checked there it is, the is checked property of uh, of that checkbox and input number two is going to be bound to the is checked property of that checkbox. And so you'll notice that right now if I look at the output of logical or you'll see that it is in fact true and of course it's true because this checkbox is uh, currently selected. I'm now going to come back to this label and I'm going to indicate that, oh let's use oh, wrong one, sorry, the content visibility and appearance I'm going to bind visible in run mode to the output of the logical OR calculation of my calculator. And so now when I go into run mode you'll notice that something is flashing is visible because at least one of these checkboxes is on. If I turn that off something is flashing uh, disappears. So as long as one of these checkboxes and as long as one of those lights is flashing I end up with the text being visible. Just going to return to design mode here and I'm pretty much finished with this uh, page so what I want to do just finally is open the demo 12 page which is a um, illustration of how to use some of the polynomial function and uh, I'm not going to bother saving that page polynomial function and um, timer uh, controls and I encourage you to walk through this page on your own I'm not going to go through everything but you can see here that we're using three different trend charts and we're using a system a, a, a timer control and a polynomial function for a polynomial calculator for each of these trend charts and so as I let me just let that stabilize here for a second as my uh, CPU is getting caught up and you you should start to see that I've get I get some uh, fairly consistent square wave uh, and uh, you know various functions here and down here at the bottom you'll notice that I've actually got text entry fields to allow me to specify a polynomial function. So if I happen to, oh, I'm not in run mode, am I? Let's go to run mode. If in run mode I come down and I change this to say 0 0.3, notice as I hit enter on this, bang, the nature of the function that is displayed up here on this trend chart is, is changing. So the polynomial calculator allows me to just choose one of them here, allows me to specify a very complex mathematical polynomial expression by setting an input value x and then uh, having a constant all the way up to a fifth order coefficient and uh, it helps if you understand a little bit about uh, mathematics to handle that but that's the purpose of that function and uh, that's also how it ties into the timer control and again I'll let you uh, play with these controls on your own. So in this demonstration we've seen design time controls, we spent a little bit of time with the color palette and color selector, uh, we've reviewed the functionality of the program blocks and we've seen how we can accomplish some very uh, important but rudimentary logic uh, by using the, uh, the two input calculator.